It isn't a kill fest without the Highland Games, and it isn't the Highland Games without kill. The 2018 New Jersey Kill Fest was all about that and more. From bagpipes, food, music, and games, we found out that you don't have to go to Scotland to learn about the culture. Marzano and I'm from Wilmington, Delaware. I'm considered one of the elite women. I just came in third at Worlds a few weeks ago. Uh, for those elite games where you have to get invited to, there's there's prize money involved. I haven't been to Europe, but I've been to California and Seattle, uh, Kentucky and Oklahoma and Virginia and Vermont, like all over. All right, this is called Scottish Highland Games. And currently right now we're throwing lightweight for distance. So traditionally we do a two turn, two spin. Um, you might see that next with uh, Amy coming up. Uh, yeah, it's one of the nine events that we do for Highland Scottish Games. Sometimes it's split into two days. Uh, so you don't have to do all nine in one, but here today, since there's only a handful of athletes, we'll be doing all nine events in one day. Hi, my name is Amy Dollard. I am a master's at Highland Games. Uh, this is my third year throwing. I am currently ranked seventh in the nation no, in the world, in the world. So my daughter, Chloe, she's 11. This is her first game. I enjoy um, doing this. I. Well, What's I've your favorite event? Probably this one or WOB. So this was lightweight for distance. WOB is weight over bar. This is my husband, John. He also throws. Hi, I'm John. <laughs> I've been throwing for two years. Um, I've qualified for Worlds three times. Yeah, three times, but it's always been a little bit too expensive to make the trip, but someday I plan on it. My name's Dan Canonico. Uh, I started this about three years ago. Um, compete pretty much whenever I can. There's you know weekends where I can't, but you know, festivals all over the country. Um, last one I did was down in Maryland. This event right here is called the weight, Lightweight for Distance. Smith. I run the Knights of Crossford. Uh, we are a live steel and stage combat team. Uh, we work with the New Jersey Renaissance Fair. Uh, at Kill Fest, we are doing two things. We are doing armored combat demos uh, focused specifically on the different weapons of the Celtic regions, uh, the swords, axes, and spears mostly. And then we are also offering for the kids fight a knight, or me and the team, we have padded weapons and we let the kids fight us because it's always fun for all sides. They said not to hit them in the face or but in the in the legs, the body and the arm. So so they had to try to beat me so I keep getting points and points and points. So I want to keep trying it so I can be better like as a as a sort of like fighter. All right, so some of the weapons that we're using here, uh, we have the horseman's axe. Uh, this was used by both the Celts as well as the Romans and eventually the British that would, uh, not the race, they wouldn't be British yet. The Normans, yeah, that came in to invade them. Uh, it's great because especially for the Celts, a lot of their weapons were also their tools. They would take these out in the field, they could chop wood, they can hunt an animal with it, but then if they get into a fight, it's real easy to throw it as well as chop somebody down with it. Uh, it's also great with uh, being on horseback because the curve in the handle allows you to, as you're riding, it can slide in your hand. The weapon we have is the Celtic uh, broadsword. Uh, this was your standard weapon. Now for a lot of the Celts, you wouldn't own one of these unless you were rich because this much metal would be pretty expensive back then. A lot of the Roman armies and Normans that they faced, because they had well-funded armies, a lot of them would carry these in, but 
as they conquered different regions, they uh, got their hands on some of them and added their own style. A lot of the uh, Celtic blades usually have the are recognizable by the very specific uh, pommel set and then the wider blade. Uh, we have another version of that. This is more of a Viking style, where again it's got the short cross guard and the heavy pommel because a lot of these swords were very front heavy, even though their long blades are weighted almost like axes because they had to chop down through a lot of these shields. So if you had a, a sword where a lot of the weight's on the back end, uh, hold the shield up, it would just glance off because all my weight's back here by my hand. But with all the weight up here, I could come down into it and with, and with all the weight coming forward, it would eventually break through or I could move the shield aside and then come at my opponent. And then we've also got short spears, which were a common uh, use, especially with the bigger shields, because you could have two or three of these that you could, as you're uh, leading forward in battle, you could either thrust forward with it, or they made great throwing weapons for uh, keeping your enemies at a distance. Hi, my name is Kara Fritz. I'm the Axe Master General of Bury the Hatchet. Uh, we've got locations in Philadelphia, Cherry Hill, Old Bridge. Uh, we're all over the place now. Uh, we're throwing axes today. We're teaching some demonstrations, getting people uh, sticking on the target as much as we can at Kilt Fest. Anyone can do it. Um, we had some uh, little like nine and ten year old kids today crushing bullseyes. Everyone can do it. Uh, all you have to do is just keep your wrist straight and follow through. Uh, my name is Ryan Sutherland and uh, they call me Mountain Man. Um, we have our axe throwing booth here at the uh, NJ Kilt Fest. Um, I usually run a, a chainmail armor company, um, but today we decided to bring out some axes uh, and have some fun uh, to join with their axe throwing competition here at the show. Um, we teach uh, with the Boy Scouts. Uh, usually we do knife and tomahawk throwing as part of our Mountain Man program. Um, so I brought a couple guys out here to uh, bring it to the fair, the festival. It's a lot of fun. We throw uh, everything from tomahawks to uh, Viking axes to the big double bit axes. And uh, just here to have a good time. So what we have here, um, we typically throw our uh, standard uh, tomahawks, okay, 19 inch handle tomahawks. Um, these are taking a beating. They're well loved, well used. Um, lately we've been adding in our to our repertoire our Viking hand axes. Okay, these have gotten a lot of use lately, a lot of fun to throw. And we just started throwing our big double bit uh, lumberjack axes. All right, so these are a little more of our mountain man feel, but uh, for you guys who get good at throwing these, now we have something to move up to. It's a lot of fun.